while I do that. So I'm just going to heat this up red hot. You cannot do this with a handheld propane torch. It will not work. You got to have something like this. And uh, it's the only way you're going to heat that up. So I got to do that to break this loose off of there. It's seized up. Now when you're using a torch over concrete, do not face the torch at the concrete because there's air trapped inside the concrete. It'll expand and the concrete will crack and pop and explode and throw chips of concrete in your face and burn you. Holding it with a pipe wrench and using another wrench inside the clevis. Okay, we got that all off of there and it's cooled down now. I put it in water, cooled it down. I'm going to take this old nut off and I'm going to thread this old nut down all the way down to this one. And the reason why I'm going to use it to clean the threads off once I cut this bar off of there, cut this rod off of there, I'm going to use this nut. To clean the threads off because if it screws up I might damage the nut and then it's going to give me trouble. I'd rather keep this new nut clean and fresh. We'll use the old nut to clean off the threads. I marked my four inches with a little piece of tape and now I'm going to take this cutoff tool here with that thin blade on it and I'm going to cut this off here. You can cut it with a torch you sure don't want to do it with a hacksaw, but that's all you got, that's all you got. This is the easiest way to do it, is this thing here. If you do it with a torch, then you got to have an angle grinder and, and smooth off the edges. And, uh, and, and of course, you run your nuts back off of there with some oil on them to clean up the burrs off the th end of the threads. Alright, that took less than a minute. Now I can take this over to the grinder, the bench grinder, and just hold this whole unit. I'm not going to set up a camera to do that because it's too much trouble. But I can, I'm going to go over there and do that. Just touch this up. I'll spin this around and just kind of wipe the edges off of that a little bit with the grinder and smooth that down. Or I could do it with a handheld uh, four inch grinder as well, but I'll do it on the bench grinder. Okay, I spent, it took less than a minute to cut that off with that uh, little cutoff tool, probably 40 seconds, maybe 30, 40 seconds, and then uh, probably another minute or so on the, uh, on the bench grinder, and then I went over to the brush wheel and uh, buffed it up a little bit. So I might have maybe two minutes tied up over there on the grinders and, buff, and buffer. Well, it cleans up pretty good. Don't have to really do much. I can feel just a little slight bit of a snag there. We'll fix that. Here, we'll just take this hammer. Don't tell nobody. But that is a hammer when you need it to be. That'll clean up the threads there better. Okay, now we just go on ahead and spin this thing on there until we have just a little bit of this sticking out on this end of it because that's how it was on the old one. Well, maybe we could measure that, see how the measurement came out. We're still right at four inches, so that's good. Well, I'm running into a little bit of a snag trying to thread this thing down. It's getting too tight, and I don't have a tap that size to clean the, those threads in there. So what I'm going to do is take this 
this piece I cut off, I'm going to take it over to the grinder and I'm going to cut a notch in there with whatever grinding wheel I have over there that has the sharpest corner on it. We'll cut a notch in here, maybe one on both sides, and make it like a thread tap uh, cleaner. Well, it's not much, but it might help might help clean up the, the threads in that hole. Well, I got it started. It's in the vise, and I got two lock nuts on here. The old one that we just had, and there was another rod from somewhere in the past that had one on it. I just unscrewed that and, and locked them together with two wrenches, and uh, so I'm going on and tightening that down. I got some spray oil down in there. Go ahead and chase that thread out. Well, we got that all cleaned up. It spins on there freely now. And uh, go on ahead and throw it, thread it onto there. I painted a little bit of andesis on there. We'll probably end up doing this again someday. Even though this truck is about 25 or so years old. We just want to come out just a little bit past the bottom of there. We cut that off about an eighth of an inch long, so there we go. Do it like that. That'll be good. Now I gotta get my smartphone out and take a quick picture of the position of these brass fittings that are in here so that I don't forget how they are, and then I'll put them over here. I'll wrap a little bit of Teflon tape around the, the threads. I should have broke these loose while it was still mounted on the truck and I didn't. Should have taken a picture of it down there and then broke them loose. And now I have to put it in the vise to break it loose. So it uh, works but not everybody's got a vise this big. I'm thankful I have one. Got those fittings on there. Now this I can't use the new one because it's too short. It's not going to reach. Uh, this is wider. Not only that, but this has a hex head on it to help me grab a hold of it and turn it while I'm pulling it out. So I got to bugger it up from fighting with it to get it out. So I'm going to take this in the shop and clean that up a little bit. I'm ready to mount this thing. Um, can't think of anything else I got to do to put it on there and mount it like it was. I know what I gotta do. I gotta get the caging bolt out of it and put that in. It's either that or back the brake off all the way. But not only that, but I like to keep these caging bolts. I don't want to keep them on here because they get uh, corroded and stuff from being out in the weather. So I like to keep them inside the truck. So I'll take that off, put that in here, pull this back a little bit so that we can mount the. Uh, um, thing on there the slack adjuster I didn't mention the caging bolt comes with a new unit all the time when you're buying one of these before you leave with it from the store make sure that's on there it'd be screwed onto the side of it like this now here's the tricky part getting these caging bolts in there I don't know if we can get in here with this flashlight or not but there's a I think we can there's a keyhole slot down in there and you got to get that caging bolt in that hole turn it 90 degrees you know a fourth of a turn pull it back hold it tight while you thread the uh, the nut down and the uh, washer and sometimes it's tricky to find that hole I found it right now real quick but but when it's um when it's on the truck sometimes it's hard to find that I don't know how far back I need to pull this, but we see we've got about half an inch of red paint right here. I'm going to pull it back at least until that red paint is inside. We'll see if that's enough. Now when you go to mount this thing, you got a figure eight shaped hole, top and bottom. And the reason you got that is because there's two different ways, not for mounting this, but I'm going to say there might be a a longer slack adjuster that would reach out for the bottom holes in my case the top holes are the ones that I use and let me look at the other one that's on here 
maybe you can see that from here there's a gap down here on the bottom and on the bottom over here but not on top that's because we're in the top part of that figure eight hole and when you're in there this rod should come out straight should come out straight not bent at an angle and if we were in the bottom hole then uh, the rod would be would be bent at an upward angle so maybe there's a longer slack adjuster maybe that's why they have this I don't know but uh, you got to watch for that when you put it back on now I can't do this on camera but this thing here the slack adjuster will move if you watch my brake shoes up there on the top you'll see that brake shoe moving so you need to have the the spring it has to be good in pulling this back now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this this slack or this uh, thing I'm going to put it up there in position then I'm going to put the pin through the hole and through this and then finish pushing it down get my bolt holes in there I can't do it on video you'll just have to try to figure out what I did okay here we go I held that thing up there in my hand my right hand and then I lined up the, the hole and put the pin in it and now I can go on ahead and straighten it out and put the bolt, bolts the studs in these holes here okay I got it in position but I could not put the washers and the lock washers on because I don't have the caging bolt pulled out far enough this is as far down as I can go I gotta tighten this caging bolt up some more pull that spring back and then this whole thing will move forward I can get my washers and everything on there got this thing mounted now I got this top bolt tightened down with the washers on there and the uh, and I double wrenched it like I did to break it loose and now I'm gonna put the impact on this one and tighten this one down that should even pull this one even a little bit tighter I uh, got the um, got the uh, it's not quite a cotter pin it's a clip different kind I got it in the the hole on this pin in here and the self-adjusting thing is still loose the original pin is gone but I got a, a nut and bolt but they're uh, the threads are too tight on us so I'm gonna take it in the shop and clean that up well, I'm about to wind up this video I uh, got this lock nut or this um, screw in there and the, the two nuts are locked onto each other pretty tight but I got just a little bit of a wiggle there so that that's free to move everything else is tight I'm gonna put my air lines on take my caging bolt off and then I'm gonna start up the truck and I'm gonna put air to this brake I'm gonna block the tires shock the tires and then put air to this so that it pulls this spring brake off and then I'm going to check my adjustment my brake adjustment I'll check it on both sides make sure I got about an inch and a half give or take of uh, travel um, of, of you know free travel on the uh, slack adjuster with, with the spring pulled off so you gotta make sure you put your air hoses on correctly uh, and the way you do that you just look up here this one on this side is the one that goes on this chamber we just changed it's hanging over here okay just look over to this side where does this one go this one goes to the front goes to the front of this chamber it's only about half an inch farther forward than this one but it is forward of it that goes to the front that's your service brake this one goes to your spring brake that that's your parking brake that releases your parking brake so this one up here goes to the front we're gonna put that one on the front up here that be this one here but I'll do it last because it's easier to reach this one from down here so we'll get that one on first since it's easier to reach without this hose in the way okay I'm done on the bottom and I know I kept referring to this one as the front that's towards the back in my case but at least it's on this side on the brake the, the actual side this one here is towards the, the the front of the brake chamber or the spring side 
anyway I didn't mean to refer to those backwards but all I gotta do now is tighten up these up here and then the other one that's back there don't forget to put these things these plugs back in to keep the dirt and water out of there I mean there's there's holes that'll drain out but still you don't want it in there put those plugs back in there I think I'm done with this thanks for watching